Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' intense book. The inky blackness of the jungle depths is lighted only by the pale yellow beams of a waning moon. Long, endless, foreboding tunnels that are animal trails by day echo to the soft, sinister padding feet of the prowling jungle cat. Far in the distance, Dango the hyena lifts his head to the heavens and tells his repulsive, slinking brothers that Numa the lion has fed, that the king of beasts has left the remnant of a kill. The moonbeams glint on the shiny stalks of a clump of bamboo by the waterhole. A pair of greenish-gold eyes gleam evilly as they stare from behind the bamboo screen. A spotted tail twitches, a chilling, raucous scream, and Cheetah the leopard launches himself upon his prey. Suddenly, a distant crash wakes the jungle to instant life. Cheetah's prey, startled, leaps to one side. Cheetah stops momentarily. In midair, it seems, drops to the ground and crashes into the underbrush. Dango the hyena forgets his meal and slinks tail between his legs into the deeper shadows. In a leafy alcove, Jane Porter wakes. She crawls out onto the platform and finds Tarzan standing... Listening. What is it, White Skin? What can have happened? It sounded like an explosion. Tarzan motions to Jane to keep quiet. He leans forward, listening intently. Tarzan knows that the sound came from the direction of the cannibal kraal, but he also knows that in all his many dealings with the Gomangani, he's never heard such a noise as this. He turns to Jane as she touches his arm. Man, many man. Boom, boom. Gun, gun, many. Bang, bang. Oh, White Skin, I don't know. I can't explain. But that sound convinces me that they must be near. Cecil, or Mr. Philander, or Father. Father? Tarzan looks at Jane incredulously. He had thought that Father was one of the parties that occupied his hut. But to associate the word Father with the noise he has just heard baffles him. I know something has happened to them. They were out in the jungle searching for me. I heard their voices. You remember White Skin? And now something has happened to them. Tarzan looks helplessly at Jane. His command of this new language is not sufficient for him to understand Jane's excited talk. But he knows she's upset over something more than the noise itself. White skin, go! No, no, you can't leave me now. And yet, if you don't go, something may happen to Daddy. I can't be selfish. I'll be all right. Yes, white skin, yes, go. I would never forgive myself if I kept you back. Go quickly, and come back quickly. Yes, white skin, go quickly. Come back quickly. Swiftly, Tarzan grasps the branch, and with one last look at Jane, the ape man swings himself into the trees and is gone. Meanwhile, at the cannibal kraal... Professor Porter, Philander, Clayton, and Darno picked themselves up from the ground where they'd been thrown by the force of the explosion. Great Scott. Whatever that was, it certainly was powerful. Uh, I, I was completely stunned for several moments. And I have been watching the natives. They are certainly mystified. They're more than mystified. Don't you think that while they're lying there, we might try to escape? Yes. Let's move toward the gate as long as we have a chance before they recover their senses. Well, they may be lying on the ground... But they are watching our every move. And may we? And did you see that party of warriors move slowly to the gate just as we started forward? Well, when we meet them, it will be time enough to think about what we'll do. I think we're sure that we had better stand our ground and let them make the first move. Uh, yes, I too am in favor of that. They don't seem to want to interfere with us, but they watch us closely. Well, how much longer are we going to stand here doing nothing? Frankly, Monsieur Clayton, we have not much choice, have we? Every time we take a step towards the gate, the natives get between it and us, or head us off. Uh, quite right, Darno, quite right. While the shock of the explosion seems to have stupefied them, uh, and they show no inclination to attack us, yet they apparently are determined not to let us get away. Evidently, the explosion was to them supernatural. They promptly threw themselves on their faces before the, uh, before the place where the idol used to be. I'd like to know how your sailors, Donna, were able to get to the dynamite. Because I'm sure now that it was a stick of dynamite that did the trick. We'll probably find that out later, monsieur. Hey! These blighters are coming toward us again! Yes, Clayton, yes! But with an entirely different attitude. Quite worshipful, I should say. See! That one in front, with his hands outstretched. But yes, monsieur! A gesture of peace. Quickly, mes amis, we must make up our minds. It is my belief that these cannibals think that we are miracle workers, medicine men. To make them believe that is our one chance. I joke, Dono, I believe you're right. You say they believe in black magic. Then let's give them an overdose of their own medicine. A very excellent suggestion. Uh, much as I, a man of science, dislike the idea of imposing on credulous savages. Professor, I consider that my skin is more important than the beliefs of these cannibals. If we can black magic ourselves out of this situation, then I'm solidly behind the idea. 
Alors, c'est entendu. I shall act as interpreter. Monsieur professeur, you will be the venerable worker of magic. Uh, but, uh, Darlow, uh, with your knowledge of native psychology, uh, hadn't you better... Don't argue, professor. Do as Darno says. Uh, that chief, or whatever he is, is coming closer. Don't you think, Darno, that some definite sign of our importance would impress them? Oui, monsieur has right. Voilà, voilà. Over there are their drums. Make some sort of signal. Right, oh. I'll do my best. Uh, Monsieur le professeur, can you pretend to work some uh, magic, uh, go through a lot of signs, etc.? Look, every eye is on Clayton. As long as we have them spellbound, don't you think we ought to really do something that will appeal to their superstitious natures? Ah, mes amis, I have it. I shall get a handful of cartridges from the chief's hut when Narkido said they were stored. Between, Monsieur le Professeur, you walk toward the sacrificial altar, and when I give you the signal, you raise your hands as though commanding something to happen. Yeah, Clayton has their attention. Walk forward, Professor. That'll draw their attention from Darno. You're doing splendidly, Professor. It's taking hold. In a very few moments, we'll have them completely in our control. Yes, but this is most undignified, most unscientific. So is being put to death by cannibals undignified Archimedes. But there, Darno's ready. Don't get too close to the fire when Darno throws those cartridges into it. There, Monsieur le Professeur. Now, I shall go forward to talk to the chief. You won't have to. Here he comes now. Yamo, Kuba, Kuba, Kuba. Menge, Nadawe, Mulkat, Bulawanak, Shanari. Bado, Kitogo, Bado, Bado. Al, Bayasana, Nukli, Mayata, Imshai. Sono, Sono, Sono. Monsieur, I have arranged a council meeting, and I have also warned them of the danger of making any attack upon us. They seem thoroughly cowed, don't they? Uh, at least we will have a respite. Formulate plans for the future. Yes, and the meeting will take place shortly. Meanwhile, they will perform their ceremony, me welcoming us to their village. Everything seems to work out all right. I have told the chief that no harm will come to them while we are with them. Well, they are busy with their ritualistic dance. Why don't we join your sailors, Donna, and decide what's to be done? in the jungle, Sheeta balked of his prey by the explosion prowls angrily through the underbrush. It is late, and Sheeta's belly is still empty. With tail lashing, dagger-like fangs bared, the huge cat comes to the clearing by the little platform. His black, wet muzzle twitches. His cold, glittering eyes glint wickedly as he turns and sees Jane standing on the platform. With a coughing snarl, the live brute launches himself against the tree. Jane hears the sound and tears into the gloom. She sees the glinting eyes, sees the long claws dig into the bark of the tree. Quickly, she pulls a heavy branch from the platform. Inch by inch, she pulls himself up the rough bark. Snapping vicious jaws break the cold wings that bar his path. With all her strength, Jane swings the branch down on Cheetah's head. Cheetah spits and screams with rage. He moves his head from side to side, trying to avoid the raining blows. Again and again, Jane tightens the club-like branch on the brute's head. But Cheetah slowly and surely hangs toward the platform. <laughs> 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 